Let's say the two balls collide, the yellow and the green ball. And after, after they collide, they bounce off each other and go in their own directions. So that's the yellow ball, the green ball, and after bouncing off, one goes one way, one goes its own way. Right, so um, so let's say uh, the yellow ball, after colliding, it goes at a velocity of v1, green ball goes at a velocity of v2. Now can we find, right, given the mass of the ball and uh, the velocities before collision, can we then find the the velocities after collision using using the conservation of momentum equation? Let's have a look at the equation m m1 u1. That's the initial yellow ball momentum plus m to u2 so this is the momentum for the green ball before collision and after collision momentum for the yellow ball is m 1v1 the green ball is m 2v2 so using this equation can we find v1 and v2 can we find v1 and v2 if we know if we know um, mass of the yellow ball, mass of the green ball, and we know the starting velocities of the two ball. But the simple answer is no, because I, we only have one equation and we have two unknowns. Right? From algebra, we know that if we have two unknowns, we need two equations to solve it. If we have just one equation, then we can only find one unknown. So what if we want to find v1 and v2? We need some more information. We need some more information. Um, well, one way is that if if somehow we know uh, v1, the value of v1, then we can find v2. Okay. But usually, if you are just setting two balls against each other uh, to collide, you won't know beforehand, right? What what the final velocities are. Now, there there are. Um, there is a special case, there is one special case where it is possible to find, um, to, to, to solve for v1 and v2. Uh, and that special case, okay, is when, when we have the information, when we, when we know that, when we know that the collision is perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic. Okay. Now remember what that means. Perfectly elastic means that um, no kinetic energy is lost. No kinetic energy is lost. Now what does this mean then? Um, don't we need another equation to to solve for both v v one and v two? Uh, we do, and that's exactly what this condition gives us. Now let's see how how this condition, this perfectly elastic condition, gives us another equation. <clears throat> no kinetic energy loss simply means that the the initial uh, the the kinetic energy before colliding is the same as the kinetic energy after colliding. So we can we can actually write down an equation for that. Let's let's try. So before colliding. The kinetic energy of the yellow ball would be okay, here goes half m1 u1 squared. Now this is the formula for kinetic energy. We'll we'll come on to to we'll learn more about this later. But for now, um, just treat it as a formula that we can use. So the kinetic energy of the green ball is half m2 u2 squared. 
So this is the total kinetic energy before they collide. Now after they collide, yellow ball would have kinetic energy of half m1v1 squared and the green ball kinetic energy of half m2v2 squared. Now we have two equations and, and we, we still have the two unknowns v1 and v2 but with two equations we can now solve for these two unknowns. Now but the moment we try to solve for these two unknowns okay, the moment we try to solve for them the algebra can be a little bit tricky Right, I'll explain that uh, maybe in a late another video. But for now, uh, we just know that because the v1 is squared, right, we have a square there, and it's not the simple simultaneous uh, equation where, where there are no squares. Right, with the square, it would make things a little bit complicated. But with some algebra, it is possible. I, I won't go through the steps now. It is possible to uh, rearrange these two, okay. Rearrange these two until we get um, a, a, a simpler equation. Now, this simpler equation, I'll write down what it, what it is. This simpler equation is that, um, is that the, the, um, the difference between the two velocities, uh, let's say uh, uh, I'll write down the difference as u2 minus u1, right? the velocity of one ball minus the velocity of the other ball, u2 minus u1. All right, so it is an equation that relates the, the difference of the velocities. And after colliding, the difference will become v2 minus v1 v2 minus v1 okay so this is the difference in velocity before colliding after colliding and the equation is that these two these two differences in velocity okay are equal and opposite right see i put a minus sign there to show that differences Opposite. Now this is a much simpler um, equation than than the kinetic energy equation, right? No, no more squares, obviously, and even no, no more masses. So that's really convenient. So for now, right? For now, let's take it that um, we have found or or we are given this equation. Now once we we know that this equation, um, we, we know this equation. I remember that this only works. This only works for the perfectly elastic case when no ke is lost. So once we we know this ex this uh, uh, new equation, simple equation, we can then use this equation with the the original um, momentum conservation equation, and and we can forget about the well maybe not forget. We can just put put aside the kinetic energy equation, we can just use the first one and the last one to solve for v1 and v2 because now we have two equations okay? Um, and we can find v1 the, the, the two unknowns v, v1 and v2 now before actually using this um, it is worth trying to understand uh, a little bit more about uh, the physical meaning of the difference in velocity. Now, there is in, in physics, there's one way to describe uh, the difference in velocities between two bodies, like u1, uh, u2 minus u1. Let's look at u2 here and u1 here. What do we mean by u2 minus u1? Actually, that is the relative velocity. Look, if uh, you have this uh, this ball is minus one meter per second right so it's going to the left at one meter every second and you have this ball here the, the yellow ball going to the right at two meters every second now these are velocities what happens if i if i take the difference 
Now, if I take 2 u2 minus u1, I get minus 1 minus 2. <coughs> that will be minus 3. Okay. Let me just uh, do an exercise on this. Minus 2 minus uh, minus 1 minus 2. Now, it's easier if I if I write this out properly. Now, what I want is to is to try and understand um, the meaning of oops. Let me clear this part first. Now I want to try and understand the meaning of u two minus u one. U two minus u one. Now if I actually take u two minus u one, let's see what I get. Um, I get minus one minus plus two, so minus one minus two. I get minus. I get minus three meters per second. So what does this mean? Now what this means is this: every second, um, the 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 yellow ball moves to the right by two meters. Right, this is in one second, and in one second, the green ball moves to the left by one meter. Now, if you think of the the separation between them, okay, the separation between them, um, they are approaching each other. Okay, they are approaching each other. Now, if you think about the separation between them, it means that every second, or right, every second, this separation. This separation decreases. They come closer together by three meters, right? Because the red ball moves to moves uh, by two meters, the green ball moves by one meter. So two plus one is three. So they, they come closer by three meters. So this three meters per second is actually a velocity. We can describe it by calling it a velocity of approach. Okay, let me write this now. Um, this is uh, we can describe this this by calling a, a velocity of approach, meaning that they come together every second. Um, uh, they come closer every second by three meters. Okay, so velocity of approach. Now, likewise, if I think of v2 minus v1, v2 minus v1, um, okay, I don't have any numbers yet. Uh, I'll, I'll solve for those in the next video. So, never mind. Let's say I have some answer, um, or I don't need to have an answer. I just want a description of v2 minus v1. I can describe it in the same way. Where every second, the green ball moves to the right by some meters and every second the yellow ball moves to the left by some meters. So when I take the difference, okay, when I take the difference, I get the total number of meters that they move apart by. Remembering that the, the, the V1 has opposite sign to V2. Okay, so I'm actually adding up the distances that they move apart. Alright, same idea of as how I got the three for the first case. I, I did not just take 1 minus 2, I have to take minus 1 minus 2. So anyway, this uh, V2 minus V1 okay, would then give me um, the uh, will, will then tell me how many seconds the, the distance in between increases. <laughs> let me let me say, say that again. Um, it will then tell me how many meters the distance between the ball increases every second. Okay. Um, what comes to think of it is it's easier to to imagine if I just put in some hypo well hypothetical numbers. So why don't I just call it something? Um, say uh, for example the v two here is two meters per second plus two meters per second. The v one here is let's say minus one meters per second. Okay. So v2, if I do v2 minus v1, I get 2 minus minus 1. So 2 minus minus 1. And that gives 
uh, 3 meters per second. Oh, all right. So this means that um, the because the, the green ball moves to the right by 2 meters in one second, and in the same second, the, the yellow ball moves to the left because the minus sign moved to the left by 1 meter. So the distance between them increases by 3 meters, right, as, which is actually what this calculation tells us. So that means that every second, the dis distance them, between them separates by, by an ex additional 3 meters every second. So um, so we can describe this uh, uh, we can describe this v2 minus v1 by saying that it is the velocity velocity of separation separation and as a as a final note notice that they have opposite signs. This uh, velocity of approach, uh, when you when you find u two minus u one, it's um, minus three, and v two minus v one is plus three. Right, it's, it's, it's a plus three here. So minus the minus sign here for v two minus the u two minus u one means that they are approaching. Right, they're coming together. If the no, wait, no. Oh no, sorry. My minus sign doesn't mean that they are approaching. Uh, I should be comparing those two actually. So, um, um, right, before collision, okay, the 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 this velocity of approach has one sign. After collision, this velocity of separation has a different sign. Okay, and it just means that um, it just means that uh, relative to to u one, okay, to to the red, yellow ball, um, the green ball is going in in different directions before and after collision. Right, before collision, green ball is moving towards the yellow ball. After collision, green ball is moving away. So that's why when we form an equation, we can't just say uh, about the well. That's why in the in the equation uh, that I showed just now, if you remember, I had a minus sign. Okay, it says that v two minus u v one is minus of u two minus u one. Uh, actually, let me write that down again. So the equation that I showed just now was that. Um, I had, if you remember, u2 minus u1, and I also had um, v2 minus v1, and I have the equation, and uh, it's not it's not just this. I also had a bracket with a minus sign in front, so that makes makes it correct, right? You see, 